very spoiled now. I get to do what I love to do, chase little green fish around the country, and uh, every once in a while I make a few dollars doing it, and that's, that's always a bonus, but uh, I love the competition of it. Uh, I thrive on it. That's what keeps me going. Uh, the competition of challenging the bass, one, um, and the competition of the other anglers. I think it was my, my parents that really started me out fishing. The first bass I ever caught, I remember vividly, I was with my dad on a little lake called Spring Lake in Sonoma County where I grew up. But uh, I guess it was probably the age of 12 when I realized what I wanted to do for a living. Um, I remember reading a, a U.S. Bass magazine and seeing Rick Clun in there and talking about him and his accomplishments at the time. And I was like, guys make a living bass fishing. That is the greatest. And I guess from that point on, I, I knew what I wanted to do for a living. Probably one of the key things you want to look for in, uh, in a rip bait bite, whether it's early spring or late fall, uh, a lot of times it's keying in on rock. Um, rock hold, holds the heat, that's where a lot of these fish are going to migrate to, is to a rocky bottom. It's a lot of times in, with a jerk bait or any other type of bait, just a little slightest change in contour on a shallow water natural lake like this. A little one foot break can be all that you need to really pile a bunch of fish up in an area. Watercolor definitely plays a key factor in throwing a rip bait, um, such as the, the pointers or even the flash minnows. Um, typically, a, a little bit clearer water is, is best. Uh, clear water meaning, uh, to me, clear water is something I can see. 20 feet down um, and, and that's some of the western lakes we have that sometimes we can see down even further than that but I would say most of the lakes we fish I mean just a good color where you can see four to five six feet down that's really ideal uh, water for throwing a rip bait and throwing the pointer minnows and that's really one of the keys to to the pointer minnow is that it is a reaction bait fish a lot of times are, are keying in onto these baits through sight um, and they also pick it up through vibrations on their lateral lines and they can find the bait that way but a lot of times these fish are visually seeing the erratic action of the pointer minnow and coming up to it so clear water is always best Don't go catch boss today. Oh. Well, there's one for the pointer. Just a little male. But they're all good, baby. How do I pick a color when I go to a lake? Um, if the water clarity is clear, um, I try and match the, the hatch or the forage of the lake as close as possible. Um, probably my absolute favorite color in, in most lakes we go to uh, that's got clear water is a ghost minnow. Uh, that's my number one choice. I, I'll start from there. Um, if I get into a clear water lake and we start getting some overcast um, or, or just cloudy conditions, then I'll probably go to the, the chartreuse shad. Um, then, uh, you know, there's another great clear water color right there. So, um, and then probably move on to the Nishiki. Um, this is just a great clear water bait, uh, overcast conditions. Uh, you can use it in stained water, over uh, uh, colored water. Um, but typically in the clear water, I'll try and stick with more natural colors to start out with. Um, and as the light changes, then that may determine if I change from a, a, just a natural translucent color to a more of a foil finish, um, say of the Aurora Black. Um, and then we start getting into um, stained water conditions or dirtier water conditions. Um, then I move into uh, something with a little more color to it. You got a blue chartreuse. You can still go back to the Nishiki. Um, then, uh, you know, in stained water, you use a gold quite a bit. 
So uh, there, you just got to play around, but typically clear water, think of your more natural colors. Uh, the dirtier the water that gets or the darker the overcast conditions, the sky conditions, um, go to your darker colors or your brighter colors. And, and that's just my general rule of thumb. So uh, just keep that in mind. When fishing a jerk bait, you always, uh, we call it a cadence. There's always a certain pattern or rhythm to your retrieve that seems to trigger more strikes. And that's the key is uh, when you go out on the water is constantly change that retrieve up through the day until you try and figure it out. But I would say that if I had to pick, uh, you know, my overall favorite cadence on a retrieve of a jerk bait, I call it a single double action. If I throw it out there. Instead of just doing this the whole time, I like to give the bait a little more erratic presentation. So what I call a single double is I go once, twice. Or you can do twice, once, but once, twice, single double cadence is what I found in most situations it works for me best. And it really gives that bait, gives it that one dart and the second dart send off this way, the third dart back down. Um, I found a lot of times like a, just like a single then a single the bait won't always get down as deep or a lot of times just stays further up on the surface or wants to come up. So a lot of times that third jerk actually turns the bait back down and puts it back down in a deeper in a deeper zone. And a lot of times that's a that's a real key is fishing jerk bait is trying to get down deeper. Now at this pointer 128, we can get down pretty consistently with 12 pound test, probably in the in the five foot zone. Um, but there's things you can do to get that bait deeper. Uh, if I'm fishing a clear water lake and I want to get that bait down in the six to eight foot zone, I can throw it on 10, even eight pound test. Even though it's a big bait, I can still fish on 10 pound test, no problem. But that lighter line less ha has less drag in the water will allow that bait to get deeper down in the strike zone.